from Anshe Sfard, Bethel MF Congregation. It's time to take 10 minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. Welcome to our discussion about the Book of Ruth and obstacles to kindness. If we look at the Book of Ruth, we have a perplexing problem. On the one hand, it's a book of great kindness. Oh yes, Boaz takes in his distant cousin's daughter-in-law, Ruth. He provides the gleanings for, for his, his cousin, for Naomi, for Ruth. But on the other hand, there seems to be a gaping hole in the kindness of this city, even in the kindness, frankly, of Boaz himself. As the Gerrit Shemuel, Rabbi Shmuel du Zeda, points out, there's a great, great wonderment about the behavior of Boaz, and the, I would say the entire city, in relation to Ruth and Naomi returning home. Well, it's true, they gave them the gleanings from the field. But is this how you treat a cousin who comes home? Is, is, this, is this what you do? You give them gleanings like a poor person? Wouldn't it have been more proper, more dignified, to have given Naomi and Ruth a place to live? Where is the real kindness in this book? The question is on Boaz, and the question is against the entire city of Beit Lechem to which they return. The first I'd like to focus on says, The two of them, Naomi and Ruth, are now equals. They walked until they got to Beit Lechem, to Bethlehem. And it was, as they approached Beit Lechem, The whole city became bewildered regarding them. And they said, Is this truly Naomi? After all, Naomi is such a pleasant person, such a wealthy person, a person with a large family, and now here is someone very bedraggled, uh, very depressed, uh, uh, standing there just with one foreign woman at her side, Ruth. Who is this woman? Could this be Naomi? Both the, the, the rabbis regarding this story have a problem. They, they say, Vatehom kol ha'yirleya? The whole city became bewildered at their arrival. How could the whole city be bewildered? How could they all go over to her and say, Oh, is that Naomi? What was, the, what was the whole city doing in one place? What were they doing there at that time? So Midrash has three theories. Three theories as to why the, the women were all gathered at this particular time. It's mentioned in the Yushalmi, Ksubos, it's mentioned in the Gemara as well. But uh, in the Medrash, they have the three theories. Theory number one. That was the deer, the day on which all the Jews were gathering to reap the Omer harvest. The, that measure of barley which would be waved in the, in the Holy Temple in those days in, in Shiloh. And then there's a tradition, says in the Mishnah of Menachos, that the day, the night before you wave the first Omer, the first measure of barley, on the second day of Pesach, that night, you gather basic gadol with a great gathering of lots of people to cut the first barley. Of course, these people were living in Bethlehem. The temple was in Shiloh, probably. They were just celebrating the first reaping of the first barley. So that's theory number one. We'll have to understand, where does that come from? How would they see that within the verses itself? themselves. Then, theory number two, that Ivzan, one of the judges of Israel, at the time of the judges, the Shoftim, he was marrying off one of his daughters. He had 30 daughters. Another Midrash says, perhaps they all died at some point. Ivzan perhaps is Boaz. Boaz is Ivzan. He's not Ivzan. But somebody was having a big wedding. And on that day, everyone was gathering for the wedding. And as they're gathering for the wedding, here come Naomi and Ruth. Third theory is Rabbi Tanchuma, namely that he, God brought this about just at the right moment. Why was everyone gathered? Because on that very day, the wife of Boaz died. Everyone came to pay her a kindness. And while they were paying her a kindness, and have, escorting her for her funeral, they landed out paying a kindness to Ruth and to Naomi. But the truth is, that as we said, what kind of kindness is it? Where do these people go with their bewilderment? 
Everyone's gawking. Everyone's interested. Oh, Naomi, she used to be wealthy. Now she's at home. She used to have children. Now what happened to them? Oh, everyone's very interested in what's going on. Oh, does anyone do anything? Does it mention that anyone took these people in their homes? Even Boaz, who's a relative, is he doing anything about it? Now, if it was Boaz's day when he was having a wedding, when his wife just died, we might understand, as the Gerrit Shmuel points out, that he was too busy with his own bereavement to take in these women. It wasn't perhaps unseemly after his wife just passed away to take in these women. But according to the other theories, why didn't they do more? So I'd like to suggest what the Midrash is telling us is that there are three things that prevent a Jew, a person, from doing the kindness that they should be doing. The first is the Omer. The Omer is the reaping of the barley. It was barley season. You know why they say it was barley season? Because that's what it says. A few verses later, it says they arrived at the beginning of the Seir Sorim, the beginning of the harvest festival for the barley. Second day of Pesach. So that's why they've made this theory. But the idea is that because a person is so engaged with their own economic pursuits, we don't have time for kindness. We feel like as if we don't have time for the kindness, for paying attention to others. Oh, sure, we take a gossipy interest in these bedraggled folks, but we don't actually do anything. Second theory is that no, that it was, it was the joy. You know why we're, we're sometimes distracted from taking care of the, the needy? Because we're so busy with our own joys, our own successes, material successes, family successes, family simchas, our own joys of our own simchas kreso, the, the, the rejoicing of our stomach as we enjoy the, the harvest, as we enjoy our families. We forget about those who are more underprivileged. That's the second distraction. The third distraction, says the Midrash, is suffering, human suffering, whether it's the wife of Boaz, whether it's the wife of someone else. People are engaged in their own pekelach, their own problems, their, their own suffering. And when people are engaged in suffering, they often are not able to see the suffering of others. Others are perhaps who have greater suffering than them. Others who have nothing to show for. And these are the three distractions. How do the rabbis come up with these theories? One of the commentaries in the Midrash says, Vayihi, Havaya, Havaya in Pasuk in Kitetse refers to Marriage, she was to another man, was, indicates marriage. Maybe it was a sad day, because there's times of sorrow. But you know what? And it was, it always is. There's always sorrows. There's always excuses. There are always economic distractions. There are always uh, joyous distractions. Hopefully, thank God, God willing. There are always, we shouldn't know from it, but there are often sorrows as well. But it cannot stop us from taking an interest in others, having, giving chesed and kindness to others. On the contrary, when Boaz begins to be comforted when he turns away from his own mourning and he begins to take an interest in others. City failed to Ruth and Boaz. And Ruth and Naomi, perhaps they were very modest, perhaps they didn't want all the attention, but they failed to give proper attention because they were too engaged, their own joys, their own sadness, and their own economic pursuits. We have to realize that indeed chesed is the core of what the Torah is all about. That's why we read this on Shavuot, especially the time of Shavuot when we're rejoicing, we're thinking about the Torah, we need to be thinking about kindness. And we can't let these three factors get in the way. If we do that, hopefully we'll understand that kol nzivotea shalom, all the ways of Torah are kindness, all the Torah is all about kindness. That's why we read it on Shavuot, and that's the lesson of Shavuot. Let's not be like the people of Bethlehem. Let's be like Boaz was at the end of the story. Person engaged, focused, making others as happy as can be. Thank you for joining us here at the Andrzej Sfard Bethlehem Congregation for a discussion of, of Sefer Ruth. Come join us each week as we discuss the Parsha, upcoming holidays, and the various how-to videos as well. Thanks to Jason Lefkowitz for all his technical support, and thanks for joining us. This has been 10 Minutes for Torah with Rabbi Joel Finkelstein. To learn more, visit asby.org.